Regardless of its acceleration times, the Everglades powertrain deployed its 325 pound-feet of torque well, especially when we were clawing up and down a particularly rocky section with front and rear lockers and four low engaged. We did have the benefit of a spotter to guide us, good thing, given that the Everglades is missing the front-mounted camera available on other Broncos. Unfortunately, due to the location of its winch, the Everglades doesn't get that useful view. The lack of front-facing camera stinks, and we hope Ford can find a way to add one, but the standard winch is arguably more important. It could mean the difference between getting unstuck and calling search and rescue when you're off-roading alone. Granted, there are countless aftermarket options, and Ford Performance sells a worn winch kit for $3,500. This factory-fitted unit has a 100-foot synthetic line and can pull up to 10,000 pounds. We originally wanted to get stuck and try out the winch, but when we arrived at the gnarliest obstacle of the day, we became more interested in conquering this hilly, muddy, rutted section. A well-chosen line and a lot of throttle got us through on the first attempt, but not without dislodging a piece of the rear overfender on the driver's side. We did get to see the winch save other drivers who weren't so lucky. When it's not scaling rock walls, winching out of the mud, or swimming, the Bronco Everglades is an enjoyable daily driver like the rest of its kin. Despite a body on frame construction and a solid rear axle, the Everglades has a surprisingly civilized ride on pavement. Too bad its bluff shape causes considerable wind noise at highway speeds. It handles better than a Wrangler, though, thanks to a more sophisticated steering system and front suspension setup. The Bronco we drove felt plenty quick charging down backcountry roads, and its high-rise air intake emitted a satisfying intake sound with the passenger's side window down and the throttle uncorked. The Snorkel's other neat trick is the reversible plates that can be easily switched between the front and back, but ours always faced backward. The Snorkel and winch are prominently displayed on the Everglades, but other specific elements define its design. All models have four doors and a hard top, but look closely to see squared wheel arches that don't appear on any other Bronco. It also has 17-inch aluminum rims reminiscent of steel wheels. We think they look cool but wonder why Ford doesn't offer a beadlock-capable version as on other Sasquatch models. At least the Everglades won't be confused with any other Bronco, it's the only one with a distinct topography graphic stamped on its front fenders, though we can't decide whether it's Chugi. The Everglades is also the only model available with the new desert sand paint color. Inside, there aren't many details that distinguish the wetlands-themed Bronco from its brethren. Every Everglades has comfy seats covered in material that's marine grade but still manages to look nice. If only we could say the same for whatever wraps the steering wheel, if that's real leather, something was wrong with the cow. At least the crisply rendered display in the gauge cluster and the massive 12.0-inch touchscreen are pleasant distractions. The SYNC 4 infotainment system is as intuitive as it is attractive, with wireless Apple CarPlay working consistently and seamlessly during our drive. The Bronco's physical switchgear and useful cubbies further contribute to a functional cabin. The 2022 Bronco Everglades starts at $54,595, slotting between the $52,820 Wildtrak 4-door and the $70,095 Raptor. Deliveries began last summer, however, there's a catch. Ford made the Everglades available only to people with an existing Bronco reservation for the 2022 model year. However, the company will offer the model again for 2023, making it more widely available. Those who can get their hands on one will be empowered to explore deeper water and drive through more difficult obstacles than owners of other Broncos. The Everglades encourages fearless off-roading.